The talk I'm about to give is not one you would get from your grandmother. What I hope to do is teach you some of the basic concepts of the science of breast cancer, and then we're going to manage some cases that I've had together. So when you're all done and you meet a friend who has breast cancer, you'll be able to tell them whether the doctor is treating them correctly. You may not be able to do the operation or give the chemotherapy, but you'll know if they're getting the right thing. Let's, let's try some of this. First slide, please. First of all, there are a lot of breast cancer cases in the United States. 180,000 in 2008 is the estimated number. 40,000 women a year will die of breast cancer. There are an additional 67,000 cases of in situ breast cancer. In situ breast cancer is the earliest form of breast cancer. Some people call it premalignant, but it really is cancer. It accounts for one-fourth of all the new cancers in women, and one in eight American women will get breast cancer in her lifetime. Next slide, please. There are many risk factors for getting breast cancer. Not everyone has the same risk of getting it. The most important and strongest risk factor is a genetic mutation. You may have heard of it called BRCA. There are two known mutations, BRCA1 and 2. And these patients have about an 85% chance of getting breast cancer in their lifetime. So it's a very strong risk factors. The others are much less risk factors. Family history, unless it's really a very strong family history, is not so important. Patients will say to me, well, my grandmother had breast cancer at 90. Am I at an increased risk? Well, no. But if you had a mother who had breast cancer at 45, your sister had breast cancer, your first cousin had breast cancer, you have an increased risk, even if you don't have the BRCA mutation. There are changes in the breast that we find on biopsy called proliferative changes. The changes, the glands are reproducing rapidly. And these cause an increased risk of breast cancer as does hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal women. The age of first period and last period, the longer that time is, the higher risk of breast cancer, and how old you were when you had your first baby. These are relatively minor risks compared to the genetic risks. Next slide. So if you look at a woman's age, the chance of breast cancer increases as she gets older. Up to about age 40, it's about 1 in 200 women. After age 70, it's 1 in 15. And from birth to death, it's about 1 in 8. So as a woman gets older, the likelihood of her getting breast cancer increases. Next slide. Survival, however, depends on the stage of diagnosis, how early you detect it. Of course, you must have appropriate therapy. But if you have appropriate therapy, the most important thing in determining survival is the stage. Next one. You can see here that if you're localized at a stage one, <coughs> the survival is at least 90%. If it's spread to the lymph nodes, that's regional in the lymph nodes, it falls <coughs> at five years to about 80%. And if it's past the lymph nodes, it falls way down to 5, 10, 15, or 20, depending on where it is. So you want to detect your cancer early. If there's one message from this talk to remember, it's find that cancer early. Next slide. The good news is we're seeing a decrease in the death rate from breast cancer. It's probably a combination of early detection and better treatment, but we've had a substantial decrease in the death rate from breast cancer from 32 per 100,000 to 24 per 100,000. So that's about a 25% decrease in the death rate over the last 10 years. Next slide. If you are an average risk woman, the average woman in the audience, you should start doing a breast exam every three years. Well, many doctors say breast exam is no good. It's never been shown to be any good. But you know, there are only three ways to find a breast cancer. Either the patient feels it, the doctor feels it, or the mammogram finds it. So it certainly won't hurt to do a breast exam every, every couple of years. Uh, after age 40, you should get a mammogram and have a breast examination every year and do your own breast examination. Evidence supports decreasing mortality with mammography. You find earlier cancers than you can feel if you get a mammogram every year. Next one. Now there are <coughs> four types of treatment for breast cancer. Surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, 
and targeted therapy. We're going to talk a little about each one before we start taking care of patients. You have to know this before you can take care of anyone. Next slide. There's been a major philosophical shift in the treatment of breast cancer. We've gone to much less radical surgery and we've gone to increasing medical and systemic therapy. Hormonal manipulation is very common. Chemotherapy is much more common than it used to be. The targeted therapy and even chemo prevention, the use of drugs, anti-hormones, to prevent breast cancer. So we've shifted away from the radical surgery to the more medical management of breast cancer. Next slide. You have to treat the local and the regional. Local is the breast itself, regional is under the arm. That can be treated with surgery, which removes the tissue and puts it in a jar in the pathologist's office. Radiation, which kills the cancer cells and stops their growth. The limitation of these two is they only work at the site they're used. You have to remove the tissue from here. It doesn't do anything for anything else in the body. You can shoot the radiation machine at the breast. It doesn't do anything for anything else. And that's the main limitation of this local and regional treatment. Next one. The systemic therapy where you use drugs, antibodies, and hormones goes throughout the body. So if a cell broke off from the breast and went to the big toe, the chemotherapy flows throughout the body and can kill the cancer cell that went from the breast to the big toe or to the liver. The targeted therapy is therapy for specific types of cancer. Hormonal therapy, the most common is tamoxifen. You may have all heard about tamoxifen. There are other drugs, aroma, uh, aromacin, arimidex. These block breast cancer that's hormonally sensitive. And then there are other targets. The most famous is the Herceptin, the HER2-NU is its target. Next slide. Lumpectomy should be the most common operation for breast cancer. That's the preferred treatment of the breast cancer. A lumpectomy removes the tumor and some normal tissue around it to make sure you have the little tentacles that grow out from a cancer. You must have radiation if you have a lumpectomy because it's more likely to come back without radiation, much more likely to come back. And this is the preferred treatment for breast cancer. Next slide. Next one, please. This is an example, a cartoon showing a lumpectomy where you take out the tumor and a little tissue, and that's a patient who had a lumpectomy. You may have a hard time telling which breast had the operation, but that's an actual patient. With this treatment, you look virtually normal if your cancer is early enough. Next slide. Patients will say, well, Dr. Giuliano, do, do what's best. If you think a mastectomy is going to help me and save my life, let's do a mastectomy. The survival is the same. Lumpectomy with radiation and mastectomy has the same long-term survival rate. So if you can look like that last patient and have the same survival, that's preferable to a mastectomy of any type. Next slide. We used to remove all the axillary lymph nodes, and you, you, you may know people who had their lymph nodes removed and their arms swelled up. And removing the axillary lymph nodes removes cancer if it's under the arm. It tells the doctor how many lymph nodes are involved, which is important for staging, which is important to determine the next step in treatment. It also 